I'm going to teach you how to model, texture, and render this thing in Blender like a pro. If you can do this right, you can probably convince a bunch of companies to pay you to do this for their websites and platforms. If you want your model to be technically accurate, then go to Google Images and search for this product. In this case, we're going to need a top view reference image. So I'm going to open this up, right click, save image as, and I'm going to save this into a new folder which I made just for this project. This is where I'm going to save any other textures or references that I'm gonna need for this. Then in Blender, go to top view, shift A, image, reference, and load up this picture into your scene. We're gonna lower this down, reduce the opacity a little bit over here, delete the default cube, and we're going to start with a plane. I'm going to add a subdivision surface surface modifier to this plane and with W I'm going to subdivide this so I have more geometry to work with. Scale this up, pull these edges here backwards and we're going to try to align that with the reference image here. Give me another loop cut right here and that way I'm not going to have very long weird faces. My faces are going to have more or less the same shape and size. Now I'm just going to adjust this geometry back here one more time and then we're going to take these two edges in the front, bring them up to here somewhere, take these two vertices and slide them backwards and I need these corners here to be sharp so I'm going to select these edges, press N in edit mode, find the item menu right here set the mean crease to one now i can scale this down slide it backwards with double g push this forwards add another loop cut right here scale it up and now my surface aligns with the reference quite well let's start adding some curvature i don't really care whether or not this is going to be perfectly accurate i'm just doing this for the video so i'm just going to try to kind of align this with what i see in my hand right here and to do that i'm just going to lift these middle faces up lift this segment even further up and then take this edge loop in the middle and lift that up even further now i'll place my 3d cursor over here straighten this out a little bit by scaling it down on the z-axis and now we're going to extrude this downwards delete the faces at the bottom correct the normals and we can now start shaping the body of this mouse so first i'll delete this vertex in the front select these edges and get rid of their mean crease we're going to set that back to zero keep the crease on this one because we're going to add a mean crease to this edge right here, set that to one, and now we got a nice sharp corner over here. We're gonna take some of these edges in the back here and lift them up a little bit. I'm just trying to improve the shape on the back of the mouse now. Slide this edge loop upwards with double G, then take this edge loop at the bottom, extrude it with E and right click, push it down and flatten it out. Now we gotta turn this into the base of the mouse. So fill, I to inset, and make sure to uncheck boundaries so we don't get an edge here in the front where there's no face. Then just slide this, merge by distance, and we can also crease this for now. It looks like this back part is going to have to be a lot thinner. So we're going to select these two faces, lower them down. Same thing with these. And I'm happy with the rough shape that I have right here. So I'm going to duplicate this in case I fuck something up. And now I'm going to apply the subdivision surface modifier so I have some more geometry to work with. Get rid of all this. And now we have to separate the top surface of the mouse from the body of the mouse below. So to do that, I'm going to select this edge loop right here. And from side view, I'm going to deselect some edges with my brush tool so that I can select these edges and continue this selection right here. Make sure to do this on both sides. We're going to press V to tear that, L to select this and lower it down a little bit. We're going to undo this a couple of times so that before I tear this, I can take this vertex and slide it forwards just a little bit, slide this one backwards. We're also going to adjust the surrounding geometry like this. And that way, when I do the same thing one more time, this here is going to have a different angle. So that's going to look a little bit better. Now tear, lower this. And now we have to make a cut here, which is going to separate the mouse buttons from the back here. So let's separate this to a whole new object so we don't accidentally cut something below here when we use the knife tool. And now now we can make a knife cut from right here to somewhere in the middle. So to do that right, we're going to go to top view. And I know that this is not perfectly aligned with my reference, but I don't really care. Give me K for knife tool. Click on this vertex right here. Bring it somewhere to the middle, like over here. Click again and then hit enter. Now we're going to delete the right side, duplicate this and mirror it to the other side. And then we're going to select these two cuts. Control E mark seam. That makes it very easy to select this surface. And we're going to press I to inset that. Make sure to check edge rail. Make sure to uncheck boundary. And that gives us a nice little face segment right here, which we can very easily delete and now we got a nice little gap here next from top view we're going to select this geometry right here inset with eye until it aligns with this back part right here this is gonna have to be a straight line so give me a knife cut right here press x to line it with the x-axis and bring it all the way to the front same thing on the other side slide this so that we shape this part a little bit better select this surface eye to inset and then press o for outset and that's going to create a little segment around this selection now we can extrude this right click lower it down a little bit delete the faces at the bottom delete the faces over here Add Add some extra loop cuts like this and lift those up so it's like we have a bevel right here now when we add a subdivision surface modifier this is going to look pretty good also subdivide the base down here we're gonna have to add some mean creases because i don't want these corners here to be round like this so we're gonna select all of these edges 
also on the other side and set the mean crease to one. We're going to have to do the same thing on the underside here. This one here doesn't want to listen. So we're going to have to fill these two vertices. And that way this corner turns sharp. We're going to get rid of this edge in the middle afterwards. We're going to add another loop cut right here. And then we're going to inset this little surface and also another surface in the front right here. Slide these two forwards a little bit. And this is where we're going to have some buttons. I guess this is the shit that you click and then you go page back, page forward or whatever. Now we're going to have to make some holes here. But if I just cut this out, these shapes are going to be way too round. I need some more geometry around here. But if I add more loop cuts, this could potentially mess up my shading over here. So instead, we're going to duplicate this again in case we fuck something up. Grid fill this and grid fill this. This, get rid of these inset parts and apply one level of subdivision surface. Now we're going to select an area like this and an area over here in the front. Inset, separate this with P. We're going to select all these edge loops, loop tools, space. Also on the vertical ones, loop tools, space. And now we can slide these inwards, slide these backwards. Again, select the vertical edge loops, loop tools, G stretch. And now it looks like we're about to get a good shape for these buttons. To get the right shape, we can get rid of these surfaces, which we just duplicated for some reason. Face, grid fill, inset slightly. Select these edge loops, extrude them inwards. You can delete the faces in the back. And now we're going to inset these surfaces, check edge rail. And with Alt E, we're going to push them outwards. This is the right shape for these buttons. Now we can go back to some more subdivision surface if you want to make this nicer and rounder. Just make sure that you select these edges so that you can bevel them when you add a subdivision surface modifier. Otherwise, everything is going to cave inwards and it's going to look stupid. Next, let's add some details to this part over here. First of all, select the edge loops around this hole here. P to separate them to new object. Connect these. Also connect this and give me a loop cut in the front. Now we can go face grid fill. Span should be two. adjust the offset. And now we got some clean geometry here. I want a straight cut right here and right here. This way I can delete this surface and this is where I'm going to place my mouse wheel. This part back here has some kind of little button. I think this is for the cursor sensitivity. Let me check. As always, I was right. Inset these six faces again. Give me a straight cut over here and over here. Get rid of this. Now loop to space on these horizontal edge loops right here. Slide these vertices forwards and slide these down. And now we got a perfect little shape for this button so we can just extrude this down duplicate this fill inset delete the outer edge loop so we have a little gap here also extrude this down and delete the face at the bottom inset this delete the face on the inside face grid fill and now we got our button ready to go here you know these other youtubers can say whatever they want but their topology game ain't shit compared to mine they should also go watch thomas cole in 3d now extrude this down loop cut right here bevel this another loop cut over here we're going to inset this surface and now we just got to add a little box right here before we can add the mouse wheel. We're going to extrude this down, but we're going to have to do some more work here because we have to make a hole for the cable. We're going to have to fill in this surface in the front. So we'll get back to that. For now, let's just crease this so we get a sharp cube. And then I'll place my 3D cursor into this gap right here. Shift A, give me a circle. How many vertices should we do? Let's say 128 for now. Scale this down, flip it sideways. When I look at my mouse from side view, the mouse wheel sticks out approximately this much. So extrude this right, then extrude it left, bevel this, take this and take this, select, check or deselect. We're going to have to do one at a time. Now extrude, right click, Alt S. These are way too big. So we're going to have to use more geometry here. Take these two circles, W subdivide, loop tools, circle. Now let's separate this into two parts. Select, check or deselect, Alt E, extrude face along normals. And let's make these little bumps here. It works better if we inset them first so the faces get thinner. And now we can extrude these. We got one side. So let's copy this over to the other side. Make sure that this is connected. And this thing is way too thick. We're going to have to make it a bit thinner. Now let's figure out a way to fill in the front. First, we're going to lift these up a little. Now we're going to take this surface over here, extrude right click Alt S to give it some thickness like this, even offset. And then we just got to extrude this edge loop from the front, try to align it with the front of this side over here. And we got to add a loop cut over here to make some kind of a gap. So bevel that delete faces, extrude these edges backwards, bevel this, and I can live with how this part looks. I'm going to correct the rest of this stuff over here off camera. I don't feel like talking about it in this video. And we just got to copy this over to the other side, push this surface further down. And now we got to connect this that's going to allow us to create a semicircle down here so we're going to use this geometry to create a hole which is going to allow us to connect a cable to this mouse because this is not a wireless mouse do you really want to live a life where you have to worry about your mouse dying any second because the battery just ran out we're also going to inset this part to make the upper part of the circle and now we're going to have to move these vertices around a little bit until we get a halfway decent circle here before we can connect everything and finally we got to add a cable so to do that we're going to use a cylinder with let's say 16 vertices flip it sideways and scale it down so it fits into this hole right here extrude it outwards like this we're going to need five loop cuts right here bevel all of those loop cuts and now here's what we're going to do go to top view select some faces on the side of every other segment like this inset take the vertices in the corners and slide them forwards then delete the geometry in the middle and now we just got to bridge edge loops on the top and the bottom
bottom edges like this. Give me three loop cuts like this, and we can fill the rest with quads. We can duplicate this geometry and paste it into the other holes. We need to have the same shit on the other side of the cylinder. Now delete these vertex loops like this. 3D cursor over here. Select this entire area. Bring it over to this hole and rotate it by 90 degrees around the x-axis. Also fill the last gap here. Object shade smooth and give me a subdivision surface modifier. Bevel these edges and look how clean that looks now. Now to make the cable we're going to add a cube. X collapse edges and faces. Subdivision surface modifier on this single vertex. And then just extrude it out. Take it wherever you want to take it. Object convert curve. In the curve properties we're going to go to geometry. Add some depth to this curve. Increase the resolution. Object shade smooth. Parent it to the base here. And now your model is more or less ready to go. We just got to texture this thing. Now texturing this should be the easiest thing ever. The entire thing is basically the same color, except we have to have a few emission maps, one for the logo and one for a light bar which is placed around here in the back. So first of all, let's make a new material which we're going to call black plastic. We're gonna make that black like this, apply that to more or less every part of the mouse. This middle part where we also have the mouse wheel is supposed to be a little bit more shiny. So we're gonna make a new material for that and just reduce the roughness there. And then in the shading workspace, we're gonna make a couple of nodes which are gonna create a little bit more of a realistic texture on this black plastic shit. So give me a noise texture node, plug the color into roughness. We're going to use a node wrangler with control T, set that to object. Give me a color ramp node, crank up the scale, reduce the contrast between the colors in the color ramp node. And that's going to make it look like there's little spots on this texture. The mouse wheel needs to have a simple gray material like this, which is supposed to be a lot more rough. I also want a rubber material for the cable. So that also has to be black, but it has to be more rough than the plastic. So that also has to be some kind of dark gray, but it has to have more roughness in the plastic because it's rubber it's not that shiny now let's make the emission maps here's how you do that i want a fully black canvas then on a new layer give me my circle tool set the thickness to 100 at least i'm going to do 125 and we're going to create a new circle like this delete one half of that circle then give me my line tool with the same thickness as the circle i'm going to add a line down here and we're going to copy this and paste it somewhere in the middle i'm trying to not make the exact same logo so the company doesn't have any good arguments for suing me but now i'm going to select all the red parts and I'll make a gradient with a different color on top of that. Something like this will do. Flatten this image. We're going to save this image into the mouse folder, name that logo, and then we're going to make a separate image which is just going to be a gradient consisting of the same colors that we use for the logo like this. Save that, name it gradient. In the black plastic material which is all over the mouse, we're going to load up the logo image so we can drag and drop that from the file browser, plug that into emission, and now we can see some colors on this surface. To map this properly, we're going to select an area over here where we want the logo to be placed you unwrap and in the uv editor we can now rotate this to adjust the position of the logo i want mine to be something like this invert my selection with control i and take every other part of the cv map scale it down and put it on some black part over here i don't want the emission map to appear anywhere else then we're going to select a segment in the back of the mouse like this add a new material name that gradient and load up the gradient image into that plug that again into the emission for this material you unwrap and now we also have a little gradient back here if you have any problems like this we're just gonna have to correct the uv map for those other surfaces and now in cycles this is gonna look pretty cool especially when we make our scene really dark that's it the materials are ready next let's make a little rendered animation for this to animate this, I just want a simple animation of the camera spinning around this mouse. So first give me a plane, place that right beneath the mouse like this, then shift A give me an empty like this. In side view I'm going to align my camera with the view and parent that to this empty. Now bring the camera closer, we're going to rotate it around the 3D cursor in the middle so that it's looking at the mouse like this and our animation is going to end up looking something like this. So in the animation workspace I'm going to go to frame 0, I keyframe rotation, then we're going to move to frame something like 2. 250, rotate the empty by 360 degrees, and once again, I keyframe rotation. Select all the keyframes, press T and set the interpolation to linear, and now we got a circular animation. We're going to move the final keyframes further down so it's rotating much more slowly. Then in the shading workspace, I'm going to switch to world. I want an HDRI. In the Blender files, I found the HDRI for this courtyard, which is built in the Blender, and then I loaded that into Blender so that I can render with this HDRI. We're going to make that a lot weaker, and this animation is going to start 
start off dark, but later some lights are going to appear. So I'm going to use some area lights. I'm going to arrange them in a row like this. I'm going to place them above the scene here, duplicate the row and give me another one over here on this side. And this is going to be approximately the final position of these lights. I also want my ground to be reflective, but still white. And then we can select all these lights, press I to keyframe their location, rotation and scale. In the animation workspace, we're going to place that keyframe somewhere on frame, let's say 40. And we're going to move the marker to frame zero, lift the light somewhere way up and reduce their scale down so that at this point they're barely going to be casting any light into the scene. Now again, I keyframe location rotation scale, interpolation linear, and now when we roll the animation these lights are going to appear at some point. We're also going to keyframe the power of these lamps so that at frame 38 when they're down here at the scene, they're gonna have the same brightness as they have now, but at frame 0 they're not going to have any brightness at all. So keyframe that. We're also going to set the background strength to 0 on frame 0. So right click, insert keyframe, and then on a later frame I want to have some environment brightness because I want that to produce some type of reflection from the mouse. So we can set that to 0.1, right click, insert keyframe. And now on frame 0 our scene is completely dark except for the emission map on this texture. And then it slowly becomes brighter as the lights appear. Now I showed you the template that I followed for this animation. I'm still going to fuck with all these settings a little bit off camera. I might add some more lights. I might change the timings a little bit. I might change the colors. I might change the camera position or whatever. I'm just gonna try to figure out what looks best in this case. Eventually, I'm gonna want to render this. So in my output properties, I'll set the resolution to 1080p. Let's do 128 samples. The output has to be FFmpeg video, encoding MPEG4, and the destination folder is going to be the mouse folder, which we just created earlier. It's up to you whether you want to render this in Eevee or Cycles. As you can see, in Eevee, it can still look pretty cool. I'm going to try to render both if I'll have the time to do this. But in any case, now you have a setup which allows you to create some pretty cool animations to showcase this product and to make something which you could potentially do for the company for their marketing purposes. Now, I'm just trying to do this for the video. I'm not actually trying to produce marketing content. So like I said, you're probably going to have to do this a little bit differently in the animation if you're actually trying to sell this as an animation. But I have a couple of videos where I showed you guys how to do this type of shit. Go check these two tutorials where I made some cooler animation. Anyway, if you want more tips for finding clients and for making some money with this type of shit, join my Discord. We got almost 2,000 people in there. We can talk more about how to monetize Blender. If you like this tutorial and you learned something, then check out my Blender ebook. I'll put the link below. I got a massive 100 page update coming soon, so stay tuned for that. In the meantime, like the damn video, subscribe to the channel, let me know what you want to see next, and I'll see you in the next one.